Showbiz in Full HD. Louise Carver, welcome to Showbiz in Full HD. Oh, thank you. It's so amazing to be here with you. And I'm sure everyone's kind of looking behind you and going, what is that? What is that? And I want to talk to you about everything today, about your music, about your jewelry. Um, let's start on the music side. You've just released a new album a couple of months ago, yes. in last year, Hanging in the Void. How's uh -huh. it going? Very, very well. We've had three singles. Um, and all have done really well with the last one, This Thing Called Love, mm -hmm. being the happiest song I've ever written, doing <laughs> the best. So there you go. Incredible. People love to be happy. And do you write all your songs? Yes, I do. Every single one of them? Yes, I sang on this last album, I did a cover of Baby, mm -hmm. um, Justin Bieber's, I don't think it's his original, yes. he might have written a word or two, but I did a beautiful piano and voice and string version of Baby, so that's the one song that I... I can't take credit for. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also wanted to touch a little bit on the incredible year you had last year, mm. getting to number one on the dance billboard oh, I know. It's very unexpected and being in the entertainment world, you have these plans and this one year plan, two year plan, three year plan, five year plan, it's absolute rubbish. You don't know what's going to happen. You just keep putting out the best that you can do. Mm. And if it's meant to take it, well, if it isn't, you just keep trying again. Yeah. This was something that I'd done two years before it went to number one. It's a track called Sunrise with a producer, Joe Bermudas. And he, did, he got various remixes made from DJs around the States and uh, in Europe. And one just connected with the American uh, public. The right time, the right time, the right sound. Yeah. None of which is in your control. The only thing I can control is as I can sing as, as good as I can and write as good as I can, mm -hmm. and then and be true to yourself. Be true to myself. You do have a sound as well. So yes, for yeah. you to go away from that to try and commercialize yourself is a bit of a bit of a silly thing to do. But people exactly. do that. Yeah, you can hear Sunrise, um, the piano and voice version. Um, on um, any kind of YouTube platform mm. or um, anything, any streaming, um, and that's the basic song. Then it's taken into a club, anthemic kind of track, it's so which cool. I performed at two in the morning. <laughs> so I go every year to the states for about a month, and then mm. I perform and promote new material. And I have two different vibes, and it's quite fun because here in South Africa, I'm very known for being behind a beautiful piano and playing all my well-known songs here and, and, and it's a lovely environment but in the States no one knows me for that so yeah. I'm on the stage two in the morning <laughs> wiki, wiki. Horns. <laughs> you know what about more have you got more collaborations on the go or are you yes. kind of uh, focusing on punting the album no the uh, we actually in the States we are um, we've got our new single crazy enough which is I think it's already on the it's in it's in the charts, in the mm. Billboard charts, but it's not on I think it's not <laughs> so top blase. 30 yet. It's in the Billboard charts. <laughs> <laughs> I know it does its own thing. So um, Joe hired Beyonce's PR team, so it's we're getting it's the music video has been launched with US People Mag um, this week. Um, and I just keep my head down and keep working. Yes. And that's how otherwise you put expectations. So uh, and that's the it's worst. It's all going thing. very well in the States. I'm gonna be over there in June to promote again, but um, it's dance, so it's not like my lifestyle changes too much. A lot of people are streaming it, mm -hmm. and that's um, how they judge what's successful and not. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to be buying a Bentley anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your dream car? No, actually, I'm an SLK fan, and the old vintage SLK. Okay, is, cool. Is really, you never know. You never know. And now the number one, I mean, people have this idea that music, you know, if you're out there and famous, that you're making loads of money. But I suppose that brings us to your next um, uh, reason why we're here today, mm. and I've been meaning to do this for so long, to feature your jewellery, the Louise Carver Collection. Where did this come about, your love of, of, of designing? <laughs> well, every girl has that. <laughs> but of designing jewellery? Well, it started nine years ago, actually ten years ago, um, and I was wanting something quite unique to have at my shows because Prime Circle and Watershed and um, Just Ginger, they all had the caps and the t-shirts. Merch. Merch. And it was very rock yeah. merch. And yeah. my audience, um, target market or whatever, are not those. They love those acts, but mm. when they come to me, it's not that environment that I'm creating. I'm creating a very um, soft, feminine kind of uh, place <laughs> wherever yeah. I sing. And so uh, I thought that I should venture into design, and I had an opportunity, a wholesaler came to me and said, would you like to wear our no name brand pearls? And I said, well, firstly, no. <laughs> I'm not a huge pearl girl. Yeah. I like the odd touch of a pearl, but nothing too much. And secondly, I don't really like your designs. So can I come on and do my own thing? And that was 10 years ago. And uh, it's grown. Uh, it's big online and also I've got a lovely database and I still have them at the shows. Incredible. So, and, the, and it's a nice range. I mean, there's, there's 
sort of um, for everyone to afford, I think. You know, on the cheaper end, you've got some stuff with silver and then you've got some stuff with, with golds as well. Yeah. And I mean, there really is something for everybody. Yeah, I, I try and stay um, the highest quality I can stay with keeping it in a price bracket. Mm -hmm. So it's affordable luxury. Yes. Um, I found there was a real gap in the market for people like me that are um, over 25 um, and we've got big expenses um, but we still are self-made women we'd like to treat ourselves so we don't have to ask hubby to buy us something or yes. boyfriend we can do it ourselves exactly so and not costume jewelry not costume you jewelry. you're too old for costume jewelry something and original <laughs> <laughs> my rule is after 20 no, let's, let's push it a bit. Let's say after 30, no, more no costume, jewelry. costume jewelry and no bad wine. You need to be buying a bottle of wine that's at least 80 rand. <laughs> You've heard of from Louise. Are we going to have the Louise Carver wine collection coming no. up soon? I think you should do I that. I was brought up on a wine farm in, in uh, Cape Town in Constantia. Oh, wow. um, Steenberg. So, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. So, yeah, that's. Uh, so, you never know. And I'm an avid wine drinker. My parents, I'm sure, well, they drink a bottle of wine every evening. So, <laughs> I, I, they, they didn't get the memo on glass of wine they thought it was a bottle of wine oh, no that's okay <laughs> it's in glass it in. It's so so tell me about um the inspiration behind the designs i mean the 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 collection is very diverse as well mm. so there really is um something for sort of younger people and slightly older people and everything but what where where do your ideas come from and your inspiration well um the ideas used to start with me needing something to wear on stage that was big and bold mm. and then it's from studying people wherever i am um in the world, I'm usually stuck in an airport somewhere by myself, and I just watch who I think has really got it together and how um, my style icons um, would dress for a, a Grammy event or the Oscars and mm. see how are they accessorizing and how can I make this affordable without jeopardizing quality. So I'm just gonna grab a piece here. Um, this is one of my new favorite pieces. So what I did here, this is lemon quartz. You've got them in your ears I as have, well. I've got yeah. a smaller one. This is okay. more nighttime because of the pave, the sterling silver, um, when you put cubic zirconias very close together, it looks like one little oh, wow. area and that's really super shiny. So I'll buy the stones and then I'll sketch out what I want and then I've got manufacturers that will pull it together for me. So this, this year I'm hoping to travel myself because I've got middlemen mm. to actually go to Turkey and go to Burma and go to these places and buy the stones from the source. Amazing. Um, so, but I'm mad about it. So I'll get a bunch of stones in yeah. and um, lemon quartz was my choice. Uh, for this month, mm. um, because it's quite a people don't really know that well, and it's so and it's beautiful. it's quite affordable. Uh, yes, as, yeah. a, as a stone. So this is six nine five, mm. um, and it's sterling silver S hook, which is that little hook that yeah. you don't have to worry about a butterfly. And I'm wearing the slightly smaller ones. So that's the kind of price. I don't have many things that sit um, above two thousand rand. But right. I won't use anything other than sterling silver or yellow gold or rose gold. And then, I mean, it's the month of love now, February. I so know. what? What do you? What do you recommend? Like, I mean, it's. It, I suppose for for a guy, a husband, a boyfriend who's been together with his with his girl, something a little token. What What would you want to get? I think um, stay away from rings if mm. a man's going to buy his uh, girlfriend or wife. Um, something because um, you don't know their sizes and it's such a personal thing a ring so I would stay away from rings I would stay away from any bold big pieces unless your girlfriend specifically likes those big yes. things so there's some classics I get a lot of guys that come in here and like I, I don't know what to get but I want to get something so we'll often suggest very simple things this is sterling silver little um, coins mm -hmm. um, and this is 695 um, Let's see, there's some things that you just can't go wrong with that no girl is going to not like. This is an idea, I, uh, this is actually from New York. So when I spend my time in America, I also bring in three brands mm. so that I don't design. So this is Ever and Ever. Um, and this is something I was quite inspired by. I think Gwyneth Paltrow and um, uh, some of the very stylish women wear just this basic rose gold coin. So no woman's going to look at that and go like, oh no, I really don't want that. Yes. And that's what I try and find. Those and you can engrave it basic. either on the front or in between. It could be like a little secret yeah, message absolutely. or something. Yeah, absolutely. That's the yellow gold one, an oxidized little thing that's there. That's beautiful. So I would stay away from um, big pieces like this mm. amethyst um, with the freshwater pole because it's, a, it's something that yes. a woman should choose for herself. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah to accessorize something. So, Louise, I mean, I don't know how you find the time for the music and the jewellery and everything and touring and billboard. Yes. How do you do it? <laughs> I do this. I've always been able to do these things, and I know that speaking to you, you have the same thing. Mm. So I'm very, very, from a 
I was signed at 15 and I had to finish my school and do well because um, my folks aren't really interested in anything other than education. So <laughs> they're like, that's nice, you got signed at 15, but how are you going to do in varsity? Yes. So in, in university, I was bringing out my first album because I had a single at 17 and then the album was to follow, mm. Mirrors and Windows. And so I was bringing out an album, I was doing first year at university, which is quite tough because I am um, economics mm. and philosophy and politics. And then I was majoring in the evening and also tutoring by my third year and um, promoting the music in turn. And I just managed to, to really focus yeah. when I need to focus. And compartmentalize. I, compartmentalize. Yeah. I need to, so this is um, my shop, but also my office because I have an events company which um, <laughs> runs my events. You can, you'll check it out on the door. Okay. So um, I've got four core big events that I do every year. Mm. And this is my workspace and my jewelry. And I used to always work from home, and I found that um, it's much better to, even if you can, you shouldn't, because mm -hmm. there's just too much distraction there. Yes. And you end up um, kind of taking things out of the dishwasher or putting your washer in. There's like, always no, 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 something no. to do. There's yeah. always something to do yeah. at home. So a good friend of mine said to me, respect your business enough to get an office exactly, yeah. outside of your home. And that was very good advice. Mm. So now if people want to find you, Louise Carver Collection and the music and everything, mm. is there one website or how can we, how yeah, can we find you? Yeah, there's one website, it's louisecarver.com. And then on the website, you can click on either jewelry or events. The events should come up straight mm. away on the homepage. Um, and then this is by appointment only. So I've mm. got a, a young, beautiful girl that helps me. And then um, people just either book or they buy online. And then there's um, Louise Carver Collection on Instagram and then Facebook as well. Amazing. Louise Carver Collection. So it's easy to find. Incredible chatting to you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for letting us have a little glimpse into your life and, and your businesses. And we wish you all the best for 2018. Thank you. Showbiz, Showbiz in, in full, full HD. HD.